Yeah, nettles, <laughs> when they're all stripped off of their leaves and shenanigans, are an amazing stalk, uh, which it has, and you can see two or three of them sticking out there. Maybe I'll get some more. Little fibers. And so nettles, just like their nearest relative, the hemp or dope family, produce wonderful long fibers. And the plants, when left to grow on their own or even cultivated, will reach a height of 12 feet. And those can be up to 12 foot long fibers. Really strong fibers, which can be spun into rope and really strong, long lasting fabric, which was done in places where there was no cotton. And you probably know that one of the reasons that almost all of ancient Egyptian land was mined for mummies starting in about the 1200s. I'm trying to remember it was the Maljukes or somebody said, hey, we've got a gold mine out there. And they weren't digging for gold, they were digging up the mummies. And then they were unwrapping all of that long staple Egyptian cotton which had not rotted in the complete and utter dryness of the North African desert and were making fine clothing. It was a lot cheaper than importing silk from China, which started in the late Greek period, about 200 BC. So what a thing. What are we going to do with the mummies? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, Wasn't there people who sold it as medicine? Yes, they, they ground up the mummies and the bones and flesh separately, and they had mummy medicine. My parent had learned about this. It's going to be awful. So I was just going on and on about this. Another one of these Dominion Herbal College deals, and there's a high percentage of recent immigrants there. And there were some older German guys, their wives dragged them along. They were tag-along spouses, probably dragged along. <laughs> oh, Dr. Drum, ach du lieber! <laughs> See, mm, you know not of what you speak in broken English. And I said, in my own mind, oh really, what don't I know? You've never worn a nettle fiber shirt. I said, no! You want to trade? I've got some really great polyester here. <laughs> All island wool. And they said, no. What happens is that when the Germans and the Austrians and the Austro-Hungarian wars against this and that couldn't get cotton or fiber, and the linen fields are all being destroyed by the war, they went to the nettles and they made uniforms out of nettle fiber. And I've just smiled and cheered and everything. Oh, wonderful. Big, good and peace and war. But nope. It said, eventually, when you've worn them every day for a few months, you want to wash them. And there were some, and they boiled them. And apparently, the washing and boiling, and probably with lye soap, broke a lot of those little fibers, which then became brittle. And he said, over time, it was just like a thousand little pins sticking up all the time. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Wonderful. That'll keep you awake in case the Danish are attacking again. Be surprised what those Danes do. Never hear about them. And then the book is called Whale Hunt by Robert Sullivan. It's a wonderful book. He's a journalist from New York City, and so he didn't have a lot of the Washington and high purity problems with whale hunting, and his editor sent him out to live at Nia Bay. Mm. Those of you who visited Nia Bay know there's a reason why there are not 10,000 people living out there. It's the most beautiful part of the northwest tip of North America. Well, anywho, he did write a great book. And one thing that they didn't do in training up the whaling crew was what their ancestors had done. When the whales started migrating along the coast, and remember, these are some of the largest animals on Earth, and they were being killed by guys in little 20 to 24 foot canoes. You think, well, wouldn't they want a bigger canoe? And as was explained to me, Ryan, you don't want to be dragging around 10 tons of waterlogged cedar when you're trying to either catch a whale or save your life, and the whale wants to catch you. You've got to have a maneuverable craft. And not only that, you've got to be at ready any time when those whales are sighted, 
then <coughs> the harpooner has got to be ready. Now it's stretch. Jane Fonda pre-whaling routine. It's got to be ready to go. <laughs> and I had been told by the other tribes who didn't wh whale that oh, this dumb macaw, they go out and they roll around in the nettles before they go out and whaling for spiritual cleansing. And we all try that. Oh, wow. Wow. wow, I didn't care if I never ate another whale. <laughs> Just actually the jitters, truly the jitters. If you want a good case of the jitters and you want to have to drink a thing, get, this. get the nettle jitters. A lot of nettles in our time. And I thought, well, how come they did that? And not for spiritual cleansing. But after having done it, I realized, and I later talked to the right people, and they said, oh yeah, Mike, it's because, remember what happens when you get stung by nettles, or you sting yourself in nettles? They itch. After they've stopped swelling up and being bright red and inflamed, they itch for up to three or four days. And so you can be there quietly in the canoe, wide awake. Everybody just stretch, stretch, stretch. Little micro workout. And with that, you feel great because of the semi hallucinatory effect of all that acetylcholine. And so, what the acetylcholine does is it gives you enough neurotransmitter to have those thoughts you can't afford to have otherwise. Not the ones that you suppress, but just the ones that have been waiting to act out in your cerebral cortices and other places. So, it can be a fun. Why am I telling them all this? There won't be a nettle left. <laughs> so, we've got food. Remember, it's a reliable, fresh green year round. Why am I starting to point? Uh, with my, looks like I've been smoking a pack a day, doesn't it? Good. Must be getting hot here now. Well, it's not just the springtime when you can harvest it, because I know in the springtime a lot of people go and harvest. Yes. Or is it very, very early spring? Why wait till spring? I don't know. That's. Ignorance keeps us locked up in our houses playing video games. We can be out playing with the nettle. As of Halloween, next year's nettle plants are starting to bud out. And they're usually underneath the alder and the maple leaves, poplar leaves, rarely birch. And if it's warm enough, they'll grow to three or four inches high, and they're the best. They still have a lot of little epidermal hairs, which are full of venom, so they don't steal their children. But those are the next year's ones, which will be up to 12 feet high. And they are growing so early because the nettles in our climate, contrary to the ones which grow in most of rest, the rest of North America, never go dormant. They are always biologically active and growing because our winters usually are not cold enough, usually and if they're protected by two or three inches of leaf mold, then they're just waiting. And so you've noticed that maybe in late December, January, February, suddenly their nettle's a foot high. What? I was here last week and there was nothing but dead leaves. <laughs> All right. All right. You should not try to water a high nettle. <laughs> Begging them to do it. More nitrogen, more potassium, more magnesium. Come on, baby. Doesn't it smell like the dog down the street? Should have heard him scream. Right, and so, nettles are a complete diet. The only thing you might need is a little more water to support your plant. So, Suevo Brooks, author of Common Sense Guide to Health, allegedly ate only nettles and water for four months starting in early spring, down in Creswell, Oregon, to prove this. He says, I can't remember whether his wife, Pamela, was really pleased with that or not. But they did have a son, still have a son, named Noah. Nice folks, all of them. He was previously a world t tennis touring guy. He go out and play tennis for a living. Not necessarily for glory, but he's just like, he's better than hitting the neighbors. <laughs> Swayable, a real nice guy. Now, great. Good deal. And 
So everywhere that people have been oppressed and there were nettles, nettle became a food for survival. And they usually did not tell the oppressor, <laughs> which is kind of intriguing. And there are about a dozen different species of nettles, and some of them bloom in the winter, December and January. And I'm thinking in particular of Malta in the island of Gozo. And little, low-growing, pretty dry soil there. Nettles with misty blue-colored flowers. Mm -hmm. Just delicate and wonderful and really <coughs> vicious, stinging venom. Whoa, we! I thought, oh, try him out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we, Ryan. You're not strong enough for this. I was going to go somewhere with that, but I thought, no, this is a mixed group. So I didn't, uh, I didn't say all mixed up. You're the only one to know that. <laughs> but what was really intriguing then is, let's see, 90, 91, that was that winter. It was a rough winter here. It was a rough winter in the Mediterranean, too. Let's see. Then, it would have been 10 years later in Ireland. And I thought, jeez, every time I go somewhere in the winter, it rains all the time. Of course, if I had done any reading or talking to people, I would have known that. And sure enough, there it is, the middle of November, and the nettles are sprouting right up the way they do here in January, February, and March. Oh my gosh, they were really good. And so... Pam and I tried talking to some of the Irish there on the west coast and around Sligo where we were officially there to take, this, a, this is a preview, the seaweed bass, and that meant it was all tax deductible. And how come you're not eating the nettles? And he said this really angry look, the Irish, when we'd ask them that. Even in the pubs late at night, when usually they'll be happy to talk about anything if they can talk. <laughs> and that's famine food. Whoa. All right. Well, I did. So uh, I saved it all for you. And that is many times when it freezes in the winter, there's not a lot. The dandelions are only about this big. You can eat them, but it takes a lot of work. But if you burrow or search under the leaves for those nettles, then they are really wonderful. And basically just steam them up, drink the juice. It's a fantastic broth. And you can take that broth and use it to make miso. And what a wonderful, because nettles grow so fast that they need their raw materials and building blocks in situ, on site, ready to go. And so that means when they are quite young, they have a ready reserve of free amino acids, not stuff all tied up in fingernails and other long chain polymer proteins but right available. And so if you need <coughs> healing or skin repair or serious wound repair, nettles are your food of choice because has anybody ever cut yourself open and seen a Danish? <laughs> Truly. Or a cookie? <laughs> if you have, see me after class. <laughs> We're going on tour. <laughs> cookie man comes to the zoo. <laughs>